Hi YouTube, Smurf here. Today we're going to talk about how to make a part within Creoparametric 2. Let's go to the computer. In order to make a new part in Creo, first you have to open it up. You'll get this screen. You can ignore this pop-up for right now. It's just a link to the Creo website. And what you want to do is you want to hit new. Now since we're only making a part, you want to make sure that part has a little dot, check mark, or whatever you want to call it right here next to the thing that says part. Now you'll want to name it, and I'll name it Smurfs. Ah, part. The name is kind of restricted. Pretty sure you can't use capital letters, so I don't know why I typed that in. Uh, you can't use, oh look, mass. When stored locally, name is the file name for the model. When stored on a server, name is used as a content name or number. Oh, well, that's not very helpful. But yeah, uh, I would just go safe, go all lowercase, and if you need to use a space, don't actually use a space. Use an underscore, which is shift minus button, just in case you didn't know that. Anyways, so now that you got the name of the part, and you got part selected, you're going to get this screen. Now, because you want to actually make a part, First, you're going to need a sketch of that part, so that way then you can then, you know, make it 3D-ish. So, right now, we're just going to make a block. Just a simple, little, kid's block. So, before you can make your sketch, you have to go up, and you have to hit plane. It's going to be like, oh, select your items. It's going to ask you where you want your plane. Now, I like doing it to the plane that is parallel to the Z axis. So I click that. If you wanted it parallel to the Y axis, you would click this one. If you wanted it parallel to the X axis, I think this is right, you would click this one. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. Uh, but yeah. Oh, look. See? Tells me. I don't know why I'm even trying. If you click that, you'd be looking, you'd be drawing your sketches if you were looking at your object from the front. From this one, it is from the top. And from this, that would be from the right side. So, once you selected your area, you hit OK. Now that is plain, and you're like, well, what did that do? Well, that allows us to make a sketch. And since we only have one plane currently, this when you hit the sketch button, it automatically defaults to the plane that is there, the single one. And that's where your sketch is going to be drawn. But since we're drawing this sketch from the front view, because that's what I selected from, you want to hit this button right here. This button allows you to change your view very quickly without having to rotate it yourself. Plus, this gives it exact. So we want to hit top. Now we're looking at it like we're from the top, just how we wanted to draw a sketch for our object. So, since we want to make a block, you hit rectangle. Now there's other things like circle, spleen, ellipses, arcs, and lines if you want to get a little more freestyle with it. So, now that it's loaded and we have a rectangle selected, you want to click once and then you want to just move your mouse over, being a little slow. Gotta be a little patient sometimes. It is a heavy duty program. But once you click it, you wanna select where you want the other sides to be formed. Right here looks good to me. So now you have that selected. However, you are still in the rectangle drawing programmy thingy. So you wanna hit escape. And that will get you back to regular, do whatever you want in the sketch mode. Now, if you notice here, there are some dimensions already drawn for us because, well, sorry, I'm just trying to zoom in there. Computer's being a little soft. But yeah, there's already some dimensions. Now, it will always dimension it not only from itself, like from the top to the bottom and from left to right, but it will also, will also dimension it from your access point. So as you see, this would be zero, and that line would be zero, 
depending on its plane. And so R square is 72 from this side and it's 79 up from that side. That doesn't really matter if you're just drawing any old object and you start from scratch. So let's ignore those for now. But we want our block to not be 75 inches wide. So we're going to change that. And I think a oh, oh, one inch, one inch side is good. But now we need to change its width because it's one in 123 inches. That, that doesn't work. So I'm going to delete those shenanigans and let's say two inches. Two inches sounds good to me. So then you just want to zoom in. And by the way, the way you zoom in is uh, you use the scroll button on your mouse. Uh, play around with it and you'll figure out which way is in and which way is out. It's pretty explanatory, pretty easy to figure out. To pan, you want to hit shift, hold your mouse button, and move your mouse. And that's how you pan. And we'll cover over we'll cover rotation once we get our 3D object actually drawn. So looks good. Everything's mentioned correctly. You want to hit OK just finish the sketch and now you notice that our thing is way over here because that's how we dimensioned it from the center point but like I said that's not too important right now so you want to pan over get it in them I know I hit pan let's go back to the top view let's try this again pan try to get it in the middle let's zoom in on it once you have your 2d sketch made of whatever you want you want to hit extrude. But wait, it didn't do anything. Aha! This is where rotating comes into play. Now, you just click your scroll wheel, and then you move your mouse however you want to, and it will rotate it along the center point of the actual sketch. So that's when dimensioning it closer to the sketch could be helpful, because it'll help you rotate it a little bit better. But it's not necessary, and you should be able to figure it out by yourself pretty simply so let's pan let's rotate a little all right so right now we're making it 0.67 thick but that's kind of a really weird dimension for just some random little play school block so we're gonna make it one there we go uh, sometimes it won't update right away and you'll have to go back into this window right here and just try to rotate it or pan it or something and then it should update for you. And now that looks like a nice good block to me. So since we figured out that's what we want for the extrusion, you hit the green check mark. And voila! You have your 3D block.